Hello everyone, my name is Majid Al Mansouri. This is a collaborative work between the University of Wisconsin Madison and the University of California San Diego. So technology has become an important part of our lives. It is integrated everywhere around us, including our key infrastructure. It is used for many transactions, medical procedures, building security, transportation, and more. With the increased use of technology, we are prone to more attacks. In the past few years, we have seen more and more cyber attacks. Some of them are extremely dangerous as they risk people's lives and sensitive information. One example is Target's data breach. This attack leaked credit cards and personal information of more than 41 million consumers. For this reason, there is an increasing need for computer security. And since computer security is critical, we are expecting our software engineering workforce to be able to write secure code. We looked at the top 20 CS programs in the US and found that security courses are only available as advanced electives. Students are not required to take these security courses, meaning that they can graduate without having any security background. Since students are not required to take security courses, they should at least gain some exposure to security in the other required courses. However, prior work found that databases course in many universities use textbooks with security vulnerable code. But this study focused only on the databases course. So we asked, what about the other computer science courses? We decided to assess the computer systems course. To begin with, the computer systems course is an intermediate course that's offered by many universities. This course is usually taught using C or C++ and some assembly language such as Intel x86. The course focuses on how the computer is organized from the software side. It is very different from computer architecture, which, fo which focuses more on the hardware side of the computer. So we ask, is computer systems course taught with security in mind? To answer this question, we investigate whether students use unsafe C and C++ functions in their course projects and whether the course is taught using these unsafe functions. So what are the unsafe functions we are talking about? Unsafe functions are functions that can be exploited and lead to security issues. An adversary can take advantage of these functions to cause many security vulnerabilities such as buffer overflow, integer overflow and more. These vulnerabilities allow the attacker to control the program's flow or reveal sensitive information in the memory. So how dangerous are these functions? We should look at some example and see how these functions can be exploited. We look here at the function strcpy. strcpy copies all the characters until another character from a source string to a destination array. The function does not check whether the length of the string we are copying is larger than the size of the source. In this example, our destination has a size of 20, and the source is controlled by the user. Since the source applied to strcpy is controlled by the user, an adversary can craft an input with a length larger than 20, which will overflow the buffer. As a result, the adversary will be able to control the flow of the program. Similar attacks can be done to other unsafe functions. There are tens of unsafe functions, but we decided to focus on a few of them, which are popular yet very dangerous. We categorize them into two groups. The first group is level one functions. These functions should be avoided if possible, and if used, the developer should be cautious when using them. The second category is level two unsafe functions. These functions are extremely dangerous and misused very frequently. Adversaries can easily exploit them. And these functions have more secure alternatives that should be used instead. To understand how secure the computer systems course, we look for these functions in the code written by students and instructors of the top 20 universities in the US. We collected code written by instructors from course websites and code written by students from GitHub, where students often upload their projects. We excluded four universities from our study since some do not teach this course and some teach it using languages other than C or C++. After collecting code, we classified some of the students' code and attributed it to instructors. 
You can take a look at the paper for more details. We finally ended up with 567,000 lines of code for students and 193,000 lines of code for instructors. We analyzed the collected code to find out the most used and safe functions in these code snippets. Using an analysis tool called FlowFinder, we found that students used unsafe functions more than 3,000 times. 60% of them are level 2 functions. While for instructors, we found more than 4,000 invocations of these unsafe functions. 55% of them are level 2 functions. And as discussed earlier, level 2 functions are extremely dangerous and easily exploitable. This histogram shows the most used unsafe functions in the whole dataset. Three out of the top five functions are level two. All of them were invoked at least a thousand times. We suspect that students use similar unsafe functions as their instructors. To conclude that there is a correlation, we compute the similarity between students and instructors code using cosine similarity between vectors. Each vector consists of frequencies of all the unsafe functions. One vector represents students and the other represents instructors. The similarity score is always between 1 and 0. If the score is close to 1, then the similarity is high, otherwise it is low. As we suspected, we found that there is a high similarity between students and instructor scores. Most universities scored above 0.5, and four universities scored above 0.9, meaning that there is a high correlation between the functions used by instructors and those used by students. Since there is a high correlation between students and instructor scores, students may be learning from their instructors. However, the score does not give a causation but only shows a correlation, and instructors might be using these unsafe functions to reduce the cognitive load on students. More studies are needed to conclude whether instructors cause students to use unsafe functions. Students may also learn from lecture notes. We looked at the lecture notes used by these universities and found that most universities do not discuss security topics. And even if they do, many of them still use and teach unsafe functions in their slides. We finally looked at textbooks used in these courses. After examining 12 textbooks, we found that only two discussed security in details, and one of them kept using unsafe functions despite discussing security earlier. All the three resources available to students use many types of unsafe functions. And there could be more resources that influence students, such as forums and online coding platforms. But this is out of our study scope, since these resources are not part of the course. One interesting finding is the low number of invocations of GITs. We found only nine invocations of GITs in the whole dataset. GITS is known to be evil, and the CS community warned about it for so long, including textbooks and lectures. Developers are starting to move towards FGITS, a safer alternative to GITS. Even compilers warn about them and suggest using FGITS. We should do the same with the other unsafe functions and teach their safer alternatives. So, is teaching safe alternatives sufficient? Unfortunately, it's not. We look here at STR and CPY, a safer alternative to STR CPY. STR and CPY work similarly to STR CPY, but you have to specify the number of characters to be copied from the source. This function can also be exploited in certain cases. In this code snippet that we found in our dataset, we are specifying the number of characters we want to copy from the source, and here in this code snippet is controlled by the user. What would happen if an attacker supplies an input such that its length is larger than 240? The adversary will overflow the buffer again and control the program's flow. So how should we integrate security into computer systems course? First, it's important to stop teaching unsafe functions and teach how to use safe alternatives correctly. Additionally, we should include security topics such as buffer overflow and explain them in terms of security, not just code performance. Also, it's possible that many instructors have no security background, so it's necessary to train and prepare them to teach essential security topics in their classes. Finally, it is important to include security in the grading system. Students are more likely to care about security if they were deducted points for using any unsafe function 
or if they follow insecure coding habits. Another possible way to solve the security issue is to make the computer security course required. But since it's not applied in the top university, we should at least integrate security into the computer systems course as just explained. To sum up, we evaluated the computer systems course by collecting more than 760,000 lines of code written by students and instructors. By analyzing the collected code using FlowFinder, we found that unsafe functions were used more than 7,000 times in the whole dataset. Moreover, we evaluated class resources such as lecture notes and textbooks and found that most of these resources also use and teach unsafe functions. Moving forward, we are working on redesigning the computer systems course by integrating security into it without increasing the cognitive load of the course on students. We will also work on integrating security into other computer science courses such as computer networks, operating systems, artificial intelligence, and machine learning courses. Also, researchers can contact me at my email shown below if they want access to the anonymized dataset. Thank you for listening.